Well, hello everyone. Welcome back, MFers. In case you haven't noticed, I'm wearing a nice hat on this episode. And Nate, he's got himself a fancy little hoodie on. That's right. We're feeling good this week. Say what, Nate? My fantasy league's went well this weekend. I only lost in one league. Nope. Don't want to talk about that. I'm all right. it all. I went 0 for 3 this week. My Syracuse Orange continue to stay undefeated in the college football circle. And that only adds to my Philadelphia Eagles staying undefeated in the NFL, baby. We them boys, more like we suck. Yeah, we that. I'm not very good at insults to start the show, but that's okay. I don't hear a lot of Cooper Rush. I don't see, I hear a lot of Cooper Rush is better than Dak now. We talk about Dak to come back. We're gonna talk NASCAR, believe it or not. We're gonna talk MLB, and you better damn well believe we're gonna talk football. Got a lot to unwrap tonight, so Hit strap it. in. A little late on this one. Taking it. Big break. Well, well, well. Welcome in, MFers. We're back. We're better than ever. Calm down in the back. (laughs) The fastest growing podcast, football podcast, I should say. Sports podcast? The fastest growing, newest go sports podcast. podcast started in the last year. Maybe ever. We're doing well. And I tell you what, Nate. Uh, Alabama. Crimson Tide. I, I knew that was going to happen. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm nervous about Tennessee because we played him in two or three weeks. And I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> to be honest. Um, but being all, all honesty, Alabama's Alabama defense, they got yeah. exposed in that Texas game. They got they got extremely exposed in that Texas game. You have been and saying that. It took a while. Obviously, there was, I mean, between Texas and Tennessee, there was not a lot of competition to potentially expose that defense. Um, but Tennessee had the Tennessee had the firepower, even though it's just one receiver. I don't understand. I mean, after his second touchdown, what what point do you start to double him? You start to get physical with him, put a bracket on him or something. Five? You know, I mean, look at my cousin. cousin. <laughs> this guy, he's one on one, just left and right, scoring like, touchdowns. No, I'm I'm putting a bracket. I'm putting I'm putting some I'm putting someone over the top. I'm putting somebody underneath. You he gonna have to be accurate as shit to get this ball in. So they must have um, just thought he was too tired to score, you know, four touchdowns, but he wasn't no way. Ain't no way. And that's and I heard from what I'm from what I heard, that's not even their best receiver. I mean, their star guy was I don't even think he was their star guy wasn't even playing. So I think that. our defense, our secondary is a tad bit better. But our offense has been struggling. Like, if we can't run the ball, we're gonna have problems. That's 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 one thing I'm concerned about. But hey, Alabama went down. I mean, they still got a chance at the playoffs because I mean, they only they just pretty much swapped uh, positions. Tennessee went to three. They went to six. Ohio State, Michigan still has to play. Clemson, Clemson gonna lose at some point. So. And then we have to play Tennessee. And then we have to play Tennessee. So Alabama still has a real chance at getting back into the playoffs. Because I mean, the top, the top five teams, four of those teams are going to, have to play each other at some point. So there is a goalpost in the Tennessee River as we speak. <laughs> They're fucking childish. They're so immature. Why you rip the goalpost down? hundred grand. I don't know when that started or why. That was like decades ago, like way like when they had the leather helmets. 
it seems like a lot of effort. I mean, someone has to open some pretty big doors for the people to get that right, thing they had out. To carry that shit. They had to carry that shit out. Somebody had to help them carry that shit out. They, oh, somebody wow. had to... According to TJ in the house, it's Tennessee tradition. Somebody, somebody most definitely aided those students. Them students didn't just get that shit out of that stadium by themselves. Yeah, we got a real uh, January 6th Tennessee style <laughs> thing somebody on our Somebody helped somebody somebody help them out of there. But honey, it cost Tennessee a hundred thousand. But they said their their uh their admin, he was like, shit, it's all worth it with a cigar worth in his it. hand. He was like, worth it's it. worth it. Well, I've never seen an uglier game winning kick in my life. <laughs> that was like a knuckleball of a kick. All Alabama kicker had to do was make that field goal and he kicks it to the right. Ah. And they lose the game. Ah. <laughs> it's ah. fucking kickers, man. This this is this is why I say man, people need to understand like kickers are a very important part of the game. You gotta have a good kicker. Like the only I feel like the only team in the NFL, hell in football in general, that actually got their kicker right is Baltimore. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, yeah. Right there's now, no, for sure. there's no other accurate kicker than fucking uh Justin Tucker. None. Oh, TJ bringing up a good point. 17 penalties for Bama in that game. That was big. Yeah, they had a lot of penalties. The craziest thing is, even with the penalties, they were still in the game. That's the craziest thing. They were still in the game. And they just they just couldn't. They, well, again, I said this. And starting at the beginning of the season, Alabama, they don't have the NFL talent anymore. They don't have the NFL talent at the wide receivers or the tight end position. Their offensive line is so-so. Their defense is done. The only NFL caliber, per, or, I don't know, defensive person right now is Will Anderson. Outside of that, they got an average defense. Yeah, the units are definitely, you know, less than it has been in previous years. But mm -hmm. there's still something about this Alabama team that scares lesser teams into making mistakes. I mean, what was that, a punt exactly. return? That the guy just completely muffed and let Alabama right back in the game. Uh, there's just something about, you know, teams just can't resist making mistakes. And, you know, the Al Crimson Tide is already good enough coming into every year with these top recruits. You don't need to hand them points by doing things like that. But, you know, you see it over and over again. I, these teams, I don't see the it. Boat. If we have if we have to play them in the in the SEC championship, I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all. Now, do you know um, is that game in Georgia or Tennessee? Do you have gonna, it's always gonna be in that. Which which game? The one when we play Tennessee? Yeah, oh, I think it's in Georgia. Okay, that'll be you know. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's, be gonna be <clears throat> it's gonna be well. We I mean because I think we have a bye week this week. Then we come back and we play. Uh, Florida, and I think after Florida, we have Tennessee. But TJ says Bama's QB and running back are really talented. They just need big, big, better boys up front on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Bryce Young for sure. No doubt. He's, yeah, he's he's talented. He's coming back from injury, so who knows how I, much I just, I just don't see, I just don't see the talent. Like, I mean, you got to look at it. I mean, the past years, even last year, I mean, at the wideout position, the, the defense, like cornerback position, safety position, there was talented. There was NFL players back there. Now they they don't have that. They got average at best average players. Like I said, Will Anderson is probably your best defensive player you have. And you take him out the game, it's a done deal. He can't if he can't disrupt shit, it's it's over. It's a done deal for you. No, I did want to get, you know, obviously that was a big thing that happened this weekend uh, in football. So I wanted to get that right out of the way quickly. But also, I mean, this is mostly football. We talk about mostly football. That's pretty self-explanatory. But we're also going to talk about other things. I asked Nate if he had any non-sports news he wanted to touch on to start this show. We're going to start doing this a little bit more. I mean, I wanted to have this open kind of format with Nate because we do love to talk sports, but we also love to touch on current events and things like and things that are going on and things that might be a little controversial and give our take on it. So, Nate, did you have anything lined up in the chamber that you wanted to discuss before we get into other sports stuff? 
I ain't hear, not really. Uh, outside of sports, I mean, yeah, obviously we have these uh, these elections going on. Dude, listen to me. Dude, ah, dude. yes, actually. The, the amount of slander that I'm seeing with these commercials is ridiculous. And like, they're not holding punches. They, this, is, this is not like like back in the day where they were ran like subtle campaign. These are outright like, we don't care. We don't like you. You're not good for this state. I'm like, wow. I'm like, yo, y'all going full force on this one. Now this who's uh crazy. who's who's over there on the ballot over there in Texas? I mean, is Cruz in danger? He can't be in danger of losing his seat. Mm-mm. It's right now. It's it's the governor's. Uh, so right now, Greg Abbott. Uh, obviously, Biddle O'Rourke is going again. He just okay. he, need, he need to go sit his ass down somewhere. Now, what about the, uh, yeah, Jay in the house? Finally, man. Thank God. Uh, hope you're ready to talk. Um. Texas gubernatorial race because this might be mostly football, but we're getting started a little differently today. And Jay, you're right there, so uh, chime in. You know, do you like Matthew McConaughey? Is he your, is he going to be your right in choice? I mean, what are we talking here? Texas gubernatorial. Nah, it's 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 gonna end, it's gonna end up the same way. Um, gubernatorial. That's not the easiest word to say, by the way. You would think it'd be gubernatorial, but it's gubernatorial. That's a weird way to say it. But Uber. Abbott's gonna win again, and it's it's the same thing. Of course. I just have one thing to say. say it. But uh, yeah, over here, I mean, it's big over here. Obviously, you got uh, Warnock and Walker. That's the huge one for control of the Senate. You know, Herschel Walker, former. Speaking of mostly football, I mean, former Georgia great. Go dogs. <laughs> Uh, taking on the Reverend Raphael Warnock for a Senate seat. And then, I mean, Stacey Abrams, she's... She's she back got that at it again? She's coming back at it again, baby. She's trying again. They take down Reverend Kemp. But you know who I really enjoyed watching last night in the debate between Abrams and Kemp was the third-party candidate. And let's not crap on third-party candidates, people. We need more parties in this system. Uh, a huge part of... The issues we have going on is the fact that we only have two parties and a bunch of turd sandwiches to choose from between them. So Shane Hazel of the Libertarian Party uh, last night did very well. And I thought that, um, man, there was plenty of talking points where you can just see the machine working on either side. Like Kemp and Abrams just sound like robots spitting out talking points. But Hazel, I mean, he's got character like he had. You could tell there was like some emotion, some some real like thought put into things like I, the, you know he just came at him with some real you know he looked at Stacey Abrams and said that uh, you know he's talking about gun control and said well you know the government's actually the biggest mass murder in history and that kind of like took everyone back like oh my god he just say that and, you know he's talking yeah, he's about, not gonna, yeah he 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 just screwed his chances he just he did him. yeah they're they're gonna either kill him in his sleep or you know they'll <laughs> find some sex tape and then deep they're gonna bury him, him. Yeah. you just you just screwed the pooch my guy you, you're not gonna get it. At all, yeah, Jay, you know, pretty much sums up the last few years of politics. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I think they both suck and we're screwed either, <laughs> either yeah, way. pretty much. Either way, we, we're screwed either way, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, there were two things in particular I wanted to touch on with you. Um, first, I'm watching the White House press conference as I always do, uh, so you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> Well, I was watching, I believe it was today, uh, Kareen Jean-Pierre was asked about her. Yeah. I don't know much about her, but from the stuff that I have heard about her, she's a coach. She's worse than Jen Psaki is her name. She's with that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how are you worse than that dingleberry? Like, Dude. apparently she's god-awful. Either, either she has nothing to preview uh you know that's her thing i have no trips to preview i have on uh, nothing i don't want to get ahead of the president um let's see what else does she like she likes to always call out the hatch act you know which basically says that from her position she can't talk about like um elections going on and things like that so anytime she's asked like a question that remotely has anything to do, <laughs> do with the election she's like she and runs away from the question yeah you know from up here i gotta respect the hatch act you know so like, no, you just have no answer. So, shut up. But yeah. Anyway, um, she was asked about Brittany Griner today. <laughs> I believe that's the day. Like, uh, hello. Anyone paying attention to what's going on over there? 
She's not coming home. She said, uh, well, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can. We want Brittany to come home. We've, we've sent the offer. And Russia just needs to take our offer. Russia don't give a fuck about your offer. Well, they're not. Russia told you to eat a dick. And they're not, you're not, she's not coming home. That's what they need to understand. Everyone needs to understand this right now. Brittany Griner is not coming home. She's staying in Russia until either the war is over or her nine years of serve. And more likely, her nine years is probably going to come before the war is over. So, in all seriousness, though, and to steal what Jay, you know, steal his phrasing there, um, she, we're not just going to forget about her, right? Like, she is a person. She's the most famous women's basketball player in America. Like, there's no way she's that the news cycle could just forget she's about only her. Famous because her ass is locked up right now. She wasn't famous when she was beating her wife. She well, wasn't famous then. Wasn't nobody, wasn't nobody talking about her then. No, I, leave, I, her, I, leave her bitch ass there. This, this is the problem that I have for everybody is that, well, what she need? No. Listen, you broke a law in somebody else's country and they're holding you accountable and you got to suffer for it. He said, was she really that famous? <laughs> I think so. I think she, she was really that famous. She, I only knew her. I think when she went, she went to, was she the Baylor? She went to Baylor? Yeah. Yeah. So she went to Baylor. I knew about that because they talked about her a lot because she was the tallest person on the fucking court. But again, you can't go. That's like, again, this is like me coming into your house. Me, you telling me, hey, these are the rules of my house. And I go and I break them rules, and you ban me from your house. I can't get mad at you because you ban me from your house because I decided to break a rule. No, you can't come into my country with fucking a, t- a pen. It's if this is you in the U.S., cool. We wouldn't have an issue. This is not. She's in Russia, and out of all places, Russia. You went to the place who hate us. They're gonna make an example out of you. Timing couldn't have been worse. Oh, absolutely. Timing was awful. But I I personally, I would rather fucking play tag with a lion and meet underwear than go into Russia. There's oh, other places you can play basketball. For sure, for sure. But, they, you know, they're paying money, and it is what it is. Nah, that ain't no money. That. you couldn't pay me enough to go to Russia and do anything. <laughs> do anything. You couldn't pay me to go take a shit there. No, I'm not doing it. The whole thing, I mean... Because we know what our offer to Russia is, right? We're offering this Victor Bout nope. arms dealer guy for said, Brittany nope. and Paul Whelan. No, nope, lead them both there. This dude so, ain't worth them. That's not a good trade. That's like me trading. <laughs> this, that, that, that'd that be like A.J. Brown being traded to the Cowboys for Tony Pollard and some fucking second round pick. No, he ain't worth it. I'm not sitting. We're not sending you. This is that's a bad offer. It's it's a, it's a bad negotiation, Chip. I'm not giving you this man. This man, his name, there's death in his nickname. Okay, he has death in his nickname. He's a definitely like they, you, you got to understand this, man. He has death, and his he's a guns dealer with death as a nickname. It's like the angel of death or something. No, it's it's something. It's something. It's something Both fucked up, and it shouldn't. No, he. They need to stay where they're at. She put herself in that position, and she needs to be held accountable for that. She needs to understand you made a big fucking boo boo, and you got to take on. You got to own up to it now. I'm yeah, tired. Yeah, says honestly, I think she did it to herself. Like you got to have better awareness of your surroundings. One hundred percent. Sure. Uh, I brought it up. At least to one of my friends, uh, you know, just in conversation of that, <laughs> comedians w- travel the country, and once they get to a city, they'll just post, "Hey, who's got drugs around me?" You know, you don't bring them with you on the plane. No, because <laughs> you get you get you get caught on a you get caught with drugs on a plane. That is a federal offense. Yeah, who was that? Amon Shumper got caught here in DFW. In the airport with weed. It's a federal offense. You're in trouble, buddy. You about to have some issues. Like it's yeah. just I for me, I just don't I don't understand the I don't understand people defending her. 
because they're like, well, it's just it was just a pin. Correct. It was just a little fake pin with THC in it. Now, if this was in the United States, she'd have a chance of getting out. This isn't the United States. Her simple ass took that shit across that big ass pond and went to Russia with it. And now they're going to hold her accountable. That's the thing. I mean, we can have our own values and morals and things like that and opinions and how we feel about it. But you can't just force that on another country. So if they had, you know, I mean, Jesus Christ in El Salvador, I, I believe a, a DUI, I, I think you get executed for that. So <laughs> it's no, just this like, literally was it? Is it Qatar? They are literally throwing people in jail for raising a pride flag. If you raise yeah. that flag in their country, you're going to jail. There's no if, Andrew, but you're going to jail for that. So this idea that we're just going to like guilt another country into like adhering to our laws and saying that it's wrongfully detained or whatever. And the ironic thing is now it has resulted in Joe Biden pardoning in this country, everyone who's uh, guilty of a federal drug offense, because now he realizes the hypocrisy of what we're trying to say. Oh, she's wrongfully detained. And yet we got all these people over here in this country. Wrong, no are one, they wrongfully detained? For there's no one in a federal offenses? prison for weed. Yeah. There's no one in a federal prison for weed. They may have weed attached to them, but there's no one in a federal prison that's locked up for weed. Maybe in a state, like maybe state jail, right? A county jail, but there's no one in a federal prison. Well, the thing is, pretty disingenuous. Like, it's probably not going to affect as many people as no, we no, think. no. If you're in federal prison and you you you're not in there for weed, that's for damn sure. You're in there for something else plus weed. No, so he 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 did that. He the thing is the these damn elections are around. He's trying to help his buddies keep their seats and keep this and it's it's this it's it's a lie. It's that's all it is. They're lying. And now more of their lies are coming out because now I don't know how true it is. I need to do some research. But I've seen this article bounce around TikTok pretty often that trans women are now being are saying or they're being told that they have to uh, enlist if there's a draft. And they are not fucking happy about it. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. <laughs> they're like, you lied to us. We tried to tell you. Everybody, everybody that, that had two fucking eyeballs and two fucking ears was trying to tell you this man was lying to y'all, but y'all fed into the bullshit. And now look at you. Brittany Griner ass is going to spend nine years in fucking a Russian prison. You as a trans woman now have to, you have to enlist in the military if there's a draft coming. You just got screwed in. He screwed y'all. He screwed y'all. He, screwed y'all. He, he fucked y'all with no Vaseline, basically. And y'all had to take it. Second thing I wanted to talk to you about. Have you seen this news of Kanye West being sued by the family of George Floyd? Why is he being sued? What did he do? Uh, apparently, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. He was talking about how George Floyd actually died of an overdose. Oh, yeah. I've been hearing that. Like I've been, uh, I've heard like the stories are now coming out. Not even saliva. I've heard. I've been hearing a lot of like, like lately. Like he didn't die from the knee on his neck. He died from a fucking fatal overdose of uh, fentanyl. Yeah. So here we go from the Guardian. Uh, George Floyd's family sues Kanye West for saying he died. From drug abuse. Good luck. If you're gonna sue him, you gotta sue everybody else that's involved in this. Because he that's ain't the only one saying Candace Owens. That's uh, the thing. So many people have said this. Yeah. So you you chose Kanye West. Why? Because he's rich. Good luck with that. Good and luck. Crazy. Um, so who's the uh who's the author of this article? Who dares put their name on this Guardian article? Nobody with common sense, that's for sure. Let's see who's. Let's see. I guess, of course, they would. Well, it's on the Guardian anyway. Uh, the mother of George Floyd's daughter, Roxy Washington, has sued rapper Kanye West for two hundred fifty million after the artist alleged that forty-six-year-old man, the forty-six-year-old man, died from drug abuse rather than being murdered by a police officer. 
that's so not, that's not gonna hold up in court. Um, I think Kanye is king of staying relevant. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, but the problem is, this is what staying relevant looks like to some people. <laughs> Just constantly pissing in the wind. Um, but it's, that's not gonna that's not gonna hold any water. Our, our, that's not gonna hold any water. In do you think time. that the Alex Jones stuff is what's feeding into this? And this maybe feels like an opportunity for this person with all the money that Alex Jones had to pay for the um, Sandy Hook uh, case. Maybe that's sort of why she's taking this opportunity now. Yeah, it did, and that's the problem. Like our the the, the court system has to pay attention. You set a precedence when you do stupid shit. At the end of the day, we have freedom of speech. We can say what we want, how we want, to who we want. It's even if it's fucked up. That's just what it is. And yeah, I just people thought that was be kind of so many people have said that. And if people exactly, and that's the craziest thing is he's not the first person to say that, and he's not the first rich person to say that. They I mean, did. they did it. They it was admitted in court that he had enough in his system to kill a man for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, you have that type of, you have that type of, uh, I mean, you have that amount of fucking drugs in your system. Yeah, a, a little, you know, a little excitement in your life is going to kill you. And that's what happened. And there was so much going on there. Like, he, he had a really bad heart. Like, he was, he had he all was not, he was, he and was obviously not. you have a guy <laughs> kneeling on hey, you for nine It minutes. was fucked up. Like, don't get me wrong, the situation was fucked up. And it should have yeah. never happened. But at the same time, you you're not he you're not gonna survive that. You you're not gonna survive that lethal that lethal dosage of fentanyl. It's just it's not gonna work that way. And it goes so, back to uh what we were talking about with the libertarian candidate. In a libertarian world, no police officer would be approaching you like that, trying to take trying to uh, get you for counterfeit money or whatever the hell you know they came after him for. It's shit, this shit, the whole shit was weird. But the fact that the shit's coming back up is just it, it just needs they just need to let it go. Leave it alone. Just just let it be. But you want to hear some funny shit? I do. I don't know if you remember the last was it last year? The guy that drove you tell me this last story wasn't funny. <laughs> the guy that drove his SUV through that uh holiday parade is oh this is even funnier. <laughs> I can't wait to see you set this one up. So no 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 no. So here's the fucked up is that, thing. Is this a Waukesha thing? Yes, In, uh, Wisconsin. This dude is representing himself. Daryl Brooks, right? Yes. And is the worst shit. You remember? I don't know. You remember that guy that was that uh that killed his girlfriend and uh tried to kill his son that tried to represent himself? The one that was screaming in the court. There's memes and videos of this fucker all over the place. Oh jeez. You know I don't hear that. You 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 know what I'm talking about, but that's pretty much how this is going. Like he, so he, so he's playing the sovereign citizen card. Ah, yeah, yeah. Always and goes it, well. You know, it, it's it's going exactly how you expect it. So basically, is, let's explain that really quick. Those people just believe that the laws don't apply to them, right? Yes, they believe they are above the law, and that the law has that the law of the land means nothing to them. All so right. this fucking idiot is he's literally in court arguing with the judge, saying that he's like he's throwing out objections. When every time he's like, I don't consent to being referred to as Daryl Brooks. Bitch, your name is Daryl Brooks. Okay? That is your name. This was on your birth certificate. Did he say what he did want to be called? No, he's just saying he don't consent to being called that. Okay. And then so so one of the so one of the police officers was on the one that one of them that arrested him was on a stand. He was like, and he asked her a question. He's like, so the the defendant that you arrested, how did he word it? He worded it. He was just basically, uh, he asked the one you, the person you identified, does he have hair or some shit like that? She was like, yes, you shaved her head. I'm just like, you're a fucking idiot. I, my thing like, is, I'm going to turn this into a game of guess who. My, Am I wearing glasses now? Dude, you gotta you gotta find the videos and watch them. I'm telling you, when we get off this, like, just, just it's a rabbit hole, but it's funny as shit to listen but to what this. If he dude, had a mustache, <laughs> to listen to this man defend himself, and he's doing a piss poor job of it. 
an extremely piss poor draft. He is going to jail. Wow. He is going to jail for a long. He's looking at life without parole, and he's going to get every bit of that shit. Which seems appropriate. I mean, I do think. I mean, did a couple people die, or just six people die, including a little boy, and sixty-two people were injured. Jeez. So, I'm telling you, dude. Just Google Daryl Brooks' trial. I'm telling you, it's gonna be the funniest shit you watch. Like I sit there, I, I be looking for the shit on TikTok because I'm like, this shit is a, this is this is amusing. This is the funniest shit, and he's an idiot. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, he's a fucking idiot, and he's going to bury himself. Oh man, well, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that was the news. It went dark. Uh, we tried it out, and that's what <laughs> happens. So. We'll no, the, the news gets worse because because yeah. you know there's there's an even bigger story out now that involves the commanders. Oh, Did you, you want to get into that? <laughs> you think I wasn't? Let's talk about it, bro. And so the news broke last week that Dan Schneider and I I, I wouldn't put this past this creepy little bastard that he hired a private investigator. And apparently he has dirt on seven other owners and Commissioner Goodell. I'm like, dude, I love it. I was like, are you serious? At this I love point, the they, idea of Dan Snyder on the horn with some who framed Roger Rabbit style guy, just you know, the, an actual like landline rings. It's like super loud too, and the guy's hello. Ah, <laughs> need some dirt in the NFL, huh? I'm your guy. <laughs> Dude, they, I, I think at this point they need to vote him out. They're supposed to be trying to vote him out. I think they're trying to do it today or sometime this week. But I'm like, he got to go. He bad for the league. If I'm his players, I'm not playing for you. I mean, every every ent- every institution, every, every every light needs a dark. You know, every Batman needs a Joker. This, this is no, Snyder. This is too goddamn dark. This, this is man, the 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 They've, they, the commanders... The Redskins, the Washington football team, whatever you want to call them, yeah. they have been in the fucking news for the last three to four years. They're the lightning rod, man. I, I, you know, I, what? Oh, Robert Kraft's getting hand jobs? Commanders. Oh, Deshaun <laughs> Watson's getting hand jobs? Commanders. Oh, John Gruden? Commanders. You know, it's just, <laughs> they're perfect. Anytime you need a fall guy, they're ready. They have been in the news, and it's not, none of the news is positive. It's all negative. Every bit of it. The sh- from the shitty commanders name that they chose, to the <laughs> shitty football team name that they chose. It's just, they've just been in the news, and it's just not been anything pleasant. Like, their football team is awful. Yeah, your oh. owner is a, a fucking weirdo and a creep the environment in your in your for your organization is toxic this this is this is pointless like what the fuck man like it's time for them to go you got to force them to sell the team that is a, a piece of history that the nfl and the rest of us finally realized that the redskins were so racist that they forced <laughs> a name change and the only option for this multi-million dollar franchise for an entire year two years was Washington. football team <laughs> football <laughs> team that's what you came up with and then you had fans giving you names shit you could have picked shit cooler than what you picked and you went with the fucking commanders commanders like why <laughs> why your team is awful Give them a cool name, okay? Your team is awful, and now you got to go back to Heineke <laughs> this week because oh. Carson Wentz broke his fuck, fractured his fucking finger. <laughs> Good lord, it's awful, bro. It's they are. It's it's just it's it's just like you patch one hole and then and then another one pops up. It's like you're not gonna fix this team. You got to get rid of. You got to get rid of Dan Snyder. You got to get. Rid of it is a perfectly located franchise. I mean, that, that's always in disarray, chaos, controversy. It should be in Washington, D.C., absolutely. <laughs> I 
I, I don't know. At this point, I don't know how this is going to play. I like the football team over the commanders. I, I actually do, too. The football team is a lot better than the commanders because the commander, this is stupid. Like, you don't command shit. Like, you, you could have picked anything. There was a lot of names you could have went with. There's a lot of fictional characters you could have went with. And you chose the fucking commanders. Commanders. Made it I, through a board. Made it through a vote. <laughs> a, a, a team of people met several times to, to discuss several it. times several times and they was like yeah this is it this is what it is the commanders the commanders is what we're gonna go with and, and your team is awful someone told their family in the morning they said honey i'll be back tonight i gotta go to this meeting <laughs> i know i know you got the kids it's, they're cutting teeth they're crying you know you're changing diapers all day but i need to go and determine the future of this franchise and what they will be named. Vote on this bullshit. That's what we're gonna do. It, it it's awful. They they their 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 franchise is in disarray. They had an awful game on Thursday against Chicago, and this is only gonna get worse from this point. Um, before we get too much into football, did you want to talk, Bubba Wallace? Bubba Wallace is a bitch. Now, unfortunately, I don't watch NASCAR. So the only way I know Bubba Wallace <laughs> is two reasons. Uh, someone put a noose in his, you know, garage, lane, I don't know, alley. Uh, you know, someone tried to hang Bubba Wallace a few years ago, I remember, <laughs> in NASCAR. So the FBI showed up. It was a whole thing. So that's how I know him. And then now this, um, let me share my screen. From Fox Sports, Bubba Wallace suspended one race for incident with Kyle Larson. And this very attractive gentleman is gonna share with us exactly why. Hey, everyone, Bob Harper from Fox Sports, Fox Sports and some fast thoughts following NASCAR's decision to suspend, suspend Bubba, Bubba Wallace, Wallace for one, one race, race for, for crashing, crashing Kyle Larson at Las Vegas. Vegas. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not shocked. Uh, I thought the lightning bolt in the would be adequate, adequate in, this in this situation. situation. NASCAR, NASCAR typically, typically doesn't, doesn't suspend, suspend drivers. drivers. They've only suspended suspend three drivers in the last, the last 11, 11 years. years Kyle, Kyle Busch. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to kill you. Or intentionally wrecking someone. And, and so, so I thought, I thought they, they would kind of follow, follow in the line. See, look at his body language. He didn't want no but smoke right now. And then all of a sudden, he wanted to be a badass. It was a very, very, very dangerous. See, they kind of want no part uh, of that at all. Really kind of that. seen, you know, no, at, at that, that type, type of speed. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, without all the technical of the helmet. Of this I swear to God, I would have. Plus, you had playoff driver Christopher Bell get caught up in it. And Kyle Larson is still with the. What a uh, what a bad look for McDonald's, huh? I'd have beat the dog shit out of him. Like you're not going to like you know how dangerous that shit is. Like, hey man, did you know that there's more toys than Happy Meals now? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, look, man, he, this, this man's over here getting his equipment out of his car. He ain't bothering nobody. You walk your bitch ass over here and want to smart some shit because you think you're a tough guy. I'd have smacked him directly in his head with that helmet. One that we really haven't seen. They'd have to kill his ass off that ground. Speed. You're going to Burger King now? With all the concerns of the safety of the none. Team. None of that was worth. None. Was none of. He just wanted runner. to be a tough guy for, for no there. reason. You and you started it. If you if you crash me intentionally, crash me. I'm getting out, and I'm going to try to end your life. Period. Like you're going to have a problem. Like I don't. It just it's just going to be that simple. I personally think it, it takes a lot of guts to be. I couldn't. I couldn't do NASCAR. Like for for a fan, it's probably boring to watch. But to actually sit in a car for God knows how long, going at a hundred miles an hour, around no, one wrong move and you're it's a done deal. You you folded like a tin can. That's the money shot right there. That's what you put in the papers. So at this point. He knew this guy what this guy didn't want any problems. He knew, <laughs> he knew it from this point. He didn't want no problems from this. And he just and then he didn't just he just that's that's a bully mentality. 
That's what that is. Like you, you, when you see the weaker man, he's not even like dude. He he backed away from you. This is just a bully mentality. That's very, all this is. Very dangerous move. Yeah. See, look, uh, man, you don't want no really smoke. You don't want no problem. Some, you know, at that type of you wouldn't speed, have been me. Uh, I'd have been going to jail because they'd have had to come pick his ass up with, try to keep his fucking brains from falling out of his head. Because I'd have hit him with the helmet. You're not gonna approach me and push me like I'm a bitch on national TV. Cause that's on Fox. Some a lot of people saw it. <laughs> You're not gonna make me look like a bitch on national TV. Nope. They gonna call. I'd rather I'd rather go down as a racist than a uh, bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm crack you in your goddamn skull <laughs> and then spit on you and walk away. I mean, man, that man didn't want no problems. He was just trying to get his shit out. He yeah, I'd have been pissed. You crashed me, but he didn't want no problems. Well. You know, hopefully Bubba can really just figure it out because I'd hate to have this be the last time I hear about him, you know. It is the problem. He's just he's just he smell it. And he his new story didn't get him the fame that he wanted. He thought that, oh, maybe if I do this, I can get black people don't like NASCAR. Okay, that's what it is. Black people don't like NASCAR, and especially the black people you trying to attract. They don't like NASCAR. They're not going to go to a NASCAR event. No one cares. You are a relevant individual who are in, who's in a sport. There's black hockey players that no one knows about. Because people you think they're, like hockey. There's going to be a Bubba Wallace documentary. For what? <laughs> no one's going to watch it. There's a Lizzo documentary. <laughs> Why? Why does she need a documentary? I don't know. <laughs> I guess they just got time on Netflix. I don't know. It, they just, it's just too much. It is too much. It, it, it's, re, it's really too much. This is exciting right here. A little bit of baseball for everyone. I know we have baseball fans that watch the show. Yeah. Yankees, eliminate the Guardians. This is a dumbass name. It's a stupid fucking name. Speaking of I awesome new names. I think I think I think I hate that name more than I hate the commander's name, the Guardians. What the what the fuck were you thinking? Boy, cracking it. See, that's the craziest thing. If you watch baseball throughout the year, right? Their stands don't look shit like that. Oh, no. it is bare ass at a baseball stadium during the season. When they come playoff time, oh, you better believe they're going to fill them stands. You best believe they're going to fill them stadiums. It really is something. Like, do you need a hundred and some odd freaking games? No. Hell no. I don't. See, the, the thing is with baseball is, like, it's not really – I mean, there's not a lot of physical activity unless you're the pitcher. I mean, you really run what? You run a good – Two, three yards between each base. Maybe, I mean, 10 at the most. There's been uh, plenty of hefty baseball players for sure. Yeah, exactly. There's currently some hefty baseball players. One in particular, I think he plays for the Mets. Like, no, <laughs> you don't really, like, no. I mean, long as, as long as you got enough power to smack the ball far enough to get you to, from base to base, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You don't have to be you don't have to be in that much shape. You just gotta have the power to hit that fucking ball and give it some distance so you can get to the base. That's it. Yeah, these these other three sports, I mean baseball, basketball, hockey. I love them in the playoffs. I love playoff hockey, baseball, basketball, but the regular season, man. Regular season straight trash. Speaking of for the hardcore fans. Speaking of basketball, the NBA season starts tonight. Hey, how about that? I was watching before we started. I was watching Brooklyn, not Brooklyn, uh, Boston in the Sixers. You know, it, it's regular season basketball. It's not, you know, it's not too much to get too hype about. Two interesting teams, a lot of storylines. A lot of story. <laughs> a lot of storylines there. One in particular is the head coach who's no who's suspended for the year. For I don't. So here's the que the question I really have because I don't have the answers. So was it an inappropriate relationship that wasn't consensual? 
or was it a consensual relationship that was inappropriate due to team rules? Yeah, I think it was the latter. Uh, this was a weird one. Uh, a lot of people were kind of surprised that this got the punishment that it did because from what I had read, it was a, a mutual relationship. That's from, I mean, that's the first story that broke. It was consensual. And then all of a sudden it turned into went from consensual to like he's making unwanted comments towards this, this staffer. And I'm like, really? It's like, what, what is it? Because if that was a situation, you just you just suspended his ass right then on the spot. Right. You, you wouldn't yeah, wait. Anytime it. you have that power dynamic where one person's higher on the chain than another, it turns into a whole lot more. Of an issue. I mean, it just in I the eyes. I, I, I don't. I think it's horseshit. But it, it looks be. really bad because he's he's dating. I think he's dating uh, Neil Long. Ah. So I think that's what makes it a, a tad worse. But other than that, I mean, so what? You know how many people have inappropriate fucking relationships? As long as the shit's consensual, who cares? Shit happens. People make oh, people have fucked up. People have inappropriate relationships at work all the damn time that's true that's why they I mean, leave their wives for secretaries bill clinton hey now <laughs> exactly we remember point, point taken. we remember um tell you what let's get into college football scores this always makes me happy especially when the team that I love to represent when things are going well. When things are not going well, you know, I don't even watch football. But when things are going well, Syracuse Orange, baby, that's my team. Ah, my Holy God. snakes, I didn't see this score. UCF, Golden Knights, just treating Temple Owls like a basketball team. 70 to 13, my good lord. Because that's all they are, is a fucking basketball school. That's insane. Oh, speaking of Temple, I uh, haven't brought this up yet, but... Carolina Panthers wide receiver Robbie Anderson recently traded to the Arizona Cardinals after a bit of turmoil. That that shit was unprofessional. And I'm not even it wasn't even on his end. It's on a coach's end. Like, bro, you're the head coach. You gotta settle that noise down. Like you, you literally gotta settle. And the fucked up thing is they are going to blow this roster up before they can hire a new coach. Because if I'm a coach, I'm not. I don't want. I don't want your leftovers. You're gonna get rid of C. You're gonna get rid of Christian McCaffrey. Robbie Anderson's already gone. The only person else you're gonna have left is DJ Moore. This is was. I don't know if it will be, but a promising roster. Like a good quarterback stepping into this situation could have been, like you know, a Matt Ryan, Colts, Russell Wilson, Broncos type situation. But now, I don't know. Ain't no good quarterbacks. Baker's hurt. He's average. He's below average, to be honest. Darnold, he sees ghosts all the fucking time. He don't know which fucking team to go throw to. The only other good quarterback they had was Matt Carroll, Matt Carroll, and he fucking he's done for the season. So you're gonna have Baker, Sam Darnold, and I think Jacob Easton is from what I heard. That's that's what you gotta deal with in Carolina at this point. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean there will be some options and a guy like Lamar Jackson who hasn't who hasn't got a new contract yet like if he's looking and you're not making this team enticing at all then that's going to be a problem Lamar Jackson not going to carry his black ass to Carolina I'm just saying like you want to be an attractive team and if you have all the issues that Carolina's been having I mean with just these poor decisions I get Tepper he's a risk taker and he you know you got to be in order to be successful uh especially in the NFL but Man, nobody, anyone who believed Baker Mayfield was the answer over Sam Darnold was fooling themselves. You're full of shit. Yeah. So but back, back to these scores here. Yeah. How about uh, how about number one Georgia, not giving Vanderbilt Commodores even a, a glimmer of hope. We don't we don't fuck around with Vandy. When Vandy comes to town. <laughs> We don't fuck around, okay? Nick Cutler was watching this game. Just he probably took a nap at halftime. We don't fuck around when it comes back to on. They they need to they they need to implode that entire or that whole school need to be just just blown the fuck up because they're useless. They're not a basketball school. 
Maybe they're maybe they're polo team. Maybe they're polo school. That could be. Cause they, um, they, they ain't good at shit else. The big big upset we already touched on uh, quite a bit. Tennessee Volunteers taking down Alabama I, in Tennessee. It was a lot I got, of fun. I got a problem with that. That word, upset. Was it oh. really an upset? I think so. I don't think so. I don't because the thing is Tennessee was a really Tennessee is a really good football team. True. Like they were they were a really football really good football team from the beginning. It wasn't like A and M. Like if A and M would have beat Alabama, that would have been an upset. I don't see I don't I don't see this as an upset. I see this is two good teams, number three and number six going head to head, and the better team won. I, I, I knew I said coming into that game, Tennessee was the better team. And they fucking showed it. Clemson. Clemson uh, shit. I can't wait. They gonna lose. They this shit. Who they still gotta play Duke in North Carolina? Well, they don't have to play Florida State anymore. They already took them down 34 <laughs> 28. Uh, Michigan start? Wolverines. Wow, didn't see this at all. Penn State um, really never stood a chance against Michigan. Apparently, seventeen and forty-one. I'm ready for them to. I'm ready for them to lose to Michigan State or Ohio State because the thing is, they're not a good football team. Michigan, they are, they, they are one trick pony, and that's the thing. They run the ball very, very well. Don't give me a no. Don't misunderstand me. They run the ball very, very well, but that's it. If you stop the run, you beat Michigan. Yeah, that's what we did last year. That's what Georgia did last year. We didn't play anything else. We knew you weren't throwing the ball. We stopped the run, and then we beat the shit out of you because your defense couldn't hold water. But if we can run, if we can, I think they had like three hundred some odd yards on the ground. If my, if if my offense is putting up 300 yards on the ground, I'm fresh as shit is on the de- on defense. No, I'm not tired. Nothing. We get we get we sit on the sideline for like five or six minutes. Well, you know they don't have the number one overall pick for the USFL, Shea Patterson, on the team anymore. This is this is new quarterbacks here. <laughs> new, new quarterback, new team, Nate. You can't have them be the same old dog. That's why I'm like I'm really interested to see how that Ohio State Michigan game is going to play out this year. The Utah Utes barely squeaking one over the Southern California. That's an upset. Trojans. Yeah, that's that was an upset. Okay, I reserve the term for this one right here. I I had USC winning that game, and then they went and pissed on their legs <laughs> and blew the game, dude. But TCU is my dark horse. If, TCU, frog, baby. if TCU can get into the top 10, and I think they have a chance because, I mean, there's a lot of teams that are in top 10 that can potentially lose. Like I said, there's two teams in the top five alone that can that, that is going to get their first loss. Because Horn Frogs defeat the Oklahoma State Cowboys in double overtime. Yeah, they, they have a receiver, dude. He's amazing. Jalen Rager? No fucking Jalen Rager. I forgot this kid's name, but he's amazing. I watched one of their games and like, dude, he 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 can run the route. His route running is spectacular. His hands are even better. So he he's gonna make a he's gonna make an NFL team extremely happy. I don't know what it Jalen is, Rager incident though. <laughs> TCU does crank out, you know, good players. You know, yeah. I- I remember John Doxson coming out of there. You know, he never really panned out in the NFL, but <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't a knock on him. I mean, you know, <laughs> they're only good in college. Andy Dalton, the Horn Frog. Yeah, okay. Look where he's at. His Still career turned great. His he's, career played out amazing. About to take Jameis Winston's job, <laughs> and that's what they're saying. They're saying that now, dude. They say Jameis might go to the bench for Andy. <laughs> Uh, the old Miss Rebels still allowed to be the Rebels. Uh, who knows when that'll change? Um, just kidding. I don't want to bring that up here. <laughs> that's for the first. I should be changing the banner. Actually, <laughs> we're no longer in news. Auburn's trash. Ah, uh, yeah. Tigers, War Eagle. Nothing here against Old Miss. Texas and barely knows how to win. Ah, uh, yes. Texas 
barely beating the Cyclones of Iowa State. Uh, don't you dare skip over my undefeated 6-0 Syracuse Orange. <laughs> the Wolfpack, they're not howling today, baby. They're, they're, they're just pups right now. Don't y'all got don't y'all play don't y'all play Clemson? Got Clemson still coming up. <laughs> so you think you'll be undefeated after that game? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Kentucky Wildcats take down the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Do they still do the cowbell, do you know? Yeah, they still do the cowbells. That shit's annoying. It's extremely annoying. That might be more annoying than during the World Cup when they have those big horns. The entire time, the Vuvuzelas or whatever. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Damn. Oklahoma Sooners beating Kansas Jayhawks, 52-42. They were fraudulent too. Kansas General was fraudulent. Booty. UK was fraudulent. Um, the Fighting Illini defeat the Golden Gophers. Is the U's the, U's not, the U will never be back. They're a joke. Miami is oh. Nah, they use back, see? Nah, they not. They're not. That's just one game. They're the joke. They're a joke. <clears throat> they, they need to scrap that program. I didn't think Arkansas could score 52 points. Holy shit. <laughs> they play BYU. How about that? <laughs> Taking down the Mormons out there. <laughs> Bring them in. It's just a bunch of Mormons. Uh, let's see. What are some other big, significant games here? Okay, double overtime. Sparty taking down the Badgers. I keep saying taking down. Maybe I should change up my freaking terminology a little bit. LSU Tigers defeat the Florida Gators. No Gator bait there. Ah, this was one I wanted to catch. Stanford beat Notre Dame. Rivalry game there. I didn't see that. <laughs> what? Notre That's Dame it. lost to Stanford? Well, you know, neither you of them are a bunch of nerd. Oh, you lost to the fucking Ivy League. Get your... They didn't go. They're just done. They ain't been the same since Manti Teo. Uh, it looks like that pretty much wraps up the college football weekend, so that's fun. Nice. That was a big weekend. I mean, Alabama... That was obviously the headline for sure. Alabama losing was, uh, it made a lot of people happy. That's for sure. Me in that's particular. Okay. So, um, I mean, do you want to kick off NFL talking about Falcons or do you want to talk about the Thursday night game first? What Thursday night game? The uh, Commanders and Bears. How'd you feel about that one? You call that a football game? No. I, mean, I wasted. Basically. Hear me out. Okay. I wasted three hours of my fucking life watching the motion football game. I was like, I'm like, it's the Commanders in Chicago. Uh, this is going to be a nope. Wrong. Terrible. Justin Fields is going to die. Okay. Justin Fields is going to be dead before the end of the year. He's not going to be able to walk. Okay. He, his office, he's being protected by paper mache. Okay, <laughs> he is. He can't do nothing. He had a rough night. A rough night. No, I couldn't help but feel like he was playing it up, though. I couldn't help no. but feel like he felt the camera on him and was doing all he could to make it seem like, oh, I'm so tough. A rough, and a rough night would be a bad game for Peyton, for for like Brady or Rogers, like you know. You didn't throw for 300. You only threw for 250, a t- two touchdowns and interception. That's a rough night. What he went through was a massacre. Every time he had, every time the ball was snapped to him, he was running. Or he had someone, he had someone in his face. He, Here's what I am curious about, because this might go back deeper for you than I even realized. Do you have love or hate in your heart for Justin Fields because he shafted the Georgia Bulldogs and went to Ohio State. We shafted him. We did. He didn't do that to us. We did it to him. That's that true. That was on us. Because we chose Jake fucking Fromm over him. That's that was on us. That had nothing to do with that. Had nothing to do with nothing. That was that whole situation was our fault. 
we could have had Justin Fields, but we chose Jake. Fuck no. Yeah, we chose Jake Fromm. Cause hell, we even lost Jacob Eason because of Jake Fromm. Because they thought Jake Fromm was such a great. No, he was a fucking bullshit quarterback. Okay, let's be honest. Jake Fromm was shit. He had so you have a little bit of sympathy for Justin. Yeah, I do. And honestly, I, I wish we would have drafted him. I wish the Falcons would have taken him. Would have made sense. I, yeah, but I understand why he didn't because you couldn't pass on Kyle Pitts. Uh, no, who, wait, no, that was the year before. Who did we? No, take? you're right. Was it Kyle? Was it? Did he get drafted with Kyle Pitts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we had to. So we had to take him. We had to take. You can't pass on that. That'd have been like us passing on Julio. Yeah, I mean the guy's just tearing it up. This you definitely can't pass on Kyle Pitts. He's just cranking out game after game of just domination. Sounds like a petty fantasy owner. That sounds like. But, but pass Kyle Pitts, boy. He's just. Making but if it you, I mean, if you think about it like this, if Drake London becomes, he has his breakout year, and then we get another number two. A real number two, Kyle Pitts. Ha- Kyle Pitts would be what everybody's expecting him to be, because That's, right now at the moment, the only thing they need to worry about is Kyle Pitts at this point. That's what you want your fourth overall pick to be. As long as we get two guys better than him, <laughs> then the defense well, you, will focus on them and not. We well, also got to think about it. when we drafted him, we still had Julio and Kelvin Ridley. So that was the thing. No, he, they they had already. Uh, oh yeah, we already traded Julio. Julio, but we 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 were. It was supposed to be a thing, and then it was Kelvin Ridley had the. Then he stepped. I would have felt better about it had they kept Julio and just drafted Pitts. Then I would have felt much better about that. If kept we Matt Ryan, then we'll, then we're cooking. Yeah, it it it, did, it didn't pan out that way, but, but that's moving in the past. But like I say, for me, Justin Fields is gonna he they he's gonna die before the end of this year. Um, he's not looking like a real number one QB. He looks like a backup. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of people in Chicago are looking at is he looks like a backup. He can't the, the throws. He, I mean, you saw the, you saw the one throw he missed. Like, how the hell did you miss that one? The one to the tight end in the end zone. Like, how did you miss that, bro? Like oh, that yeah. is a, that's something you should be able to do in your sleep. But Hey, he fucked it up. I don't even want to talk about the commanders. They're shit. For those it's, curious, the Chicago Bears backup, Nate, who do you think it is off the top of your head? Quarterback-wise? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I know who it is, and I can't think of his name. Trevor Simeon. Yes, that's who it is. <laughs> that's their backup. But, I mean, you, you can do worse. You can do a whole hell of a lot worse. But I, I don't – Chicago's Chicago is going to they're going to definitely be drafting in the top five this year because there's no way Justin that defense is awful. Rokon Smith should just go ahead and walk away, and let that franchise die because they're they're done. Yeah, they need to trade him for whatever value they can get right now before it just yep. because there's no way in hell I'm signing a long term deal. You can kiss my ass. Um, the Commanders are just awful. I, I like that Brian Robinson scored his first touchdown after he yes. went through. Um, that was it probably the highlight of the night. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. But other than that, the rest of the game was shit. Darnell Mooney Terrible. choked the game away because he can't catch. His hands are fucking for decoration. In defense of Darnell Mooney, he doesn't get very many targets throughout a game. So I, I think when the ball is actually thrown his way, he's like, holy shit. <laughs> it's really oh, yeah. All you had to do is hold the ball. That's all you yeah. had to do. All you had to do is hold it. It was a pin it against the defenders. Pin it against the defenders back until you hit the ground. Yeah. Then take then just do something. Don't drop the ball. Don't if jump he, I mean, really, if he'd caught it from the jump, that would have made it very interesting because I mean that was like right on the goal line. So it'd have been a touch. If he'd have caught it from the beginning, possessed it, held on to it till he hit the ground. It'd have been a touchdown either way because it broke, so. it'd have broke the plane, but yeah, he had to juggle it because his mom he thought he was in a fucking circus. <laughs> so that was the uh Thursday night game. Hopefully, the next one, I think it's Saints, Saints and Cardinals, and, uh, yeah, Saints Cardinals. That should it's be gonna, much it's gonna be awful.
How about your Atlanta Falcons finding a way to get to 500? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, the, listen to me. This is, the best defense, this is the best defense we've had in years. Years? Yes, years. We're, we're, we're pressuring the quarter. This is the first time we've actually had like a pass rush. Like we're pressuring the quarterback. We're getting to the quarterback. We're make we are making them uncomfortable. We, we're causing turnovers, um, and our offense is not screwing us. That's the biggest thing. Our offense isn't screwing us. Marcus Mariota is playing. He's twenty eight and he's playing great. He's not making very many mistakes. He was what? Uh, I think he was thirteen for fourteen for one sixty nine and two touchdowns. Our run game, we're controlling it. We're controlling. We're controlling the clock with the run, and then our defense is just coming out and handling business. We dominated the Niners. We gave them. We gave up two early touchdowns that I really didn't like that our defense gave up, but we shut them out in the second half. So we held them to zero points in third and fourth quarter. Always one twenty nine. Yeah, Marcus had a uh, had a score on the ground to go with his two through the air. Mm-hmm. And then you look at look, we ran for almost 150, what, almost 200 yards. And this is big right here. I mean, people were, I think, most fans. We, fans that ass. we shut that ass down. And D boy didn't do nothing. <laughs> Two for 11. That's it. That's all he got. Uh, of course, I was playing Brandon Ayuk in one of my fantasy leagues. And yeah, I, just... I had, I've met the same fate. Unbelievable. <laughs> I met the same fate. I, I was uh-huh. watching, like, oh, yeah, he's still on the team, and he scores two <laughs> touchdowns. Yeah. But, I mean, for the most part, like, we shut every, we shut them down. We we shut them down. And, I'm like I said, the defense, our defense is – we're improving every week. And I like and – I, and I like that. Now we just – if we can just stretch the field, that's, that's going to that's gonna help. If we can just start throwing the ball downfield, that's going to really help us out. It's just man, without Cordero, this is such a boring offense to watch, dude. It's <laughs> painful. It's boring. It's painful watching Caleb Huntley get four <laughs> yards. Tyler Algier get three yards. You know, Marcus will scramble for three. Oh my god! It's boring because Cordero Patterson is sitting on your bench right now. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> the key is please catch a bomb. <laughs> That's why it's boring. <laughs> so boring. Well, uh, you know, winning is not boring. So uh, there's that. Hey, I'm good with it. Next game we had the Bailey Zappy led Patriots. Bailey Zappy and Ramondre Stevenson's game. two touchdowns. Everyone's saying everyone's everyone's comparing the Brady Drew Bledsoe situation. Oh God. <laughs> they already start. They, they already Not started. Three years into Mac Jones' career, as they already being compared to fucking Bledsoe yep, they, and Brady. They're saying Bailey Zappi is the new Tom Brady. Oh no, <laughs> Mac Jones, a Western is, Kentucky hilltopper. He's only been out for a couple weeks, and now they're saying that that Bailey Zappi is the Tom is is Tom Brady now. I'm like, this is what this, was, this is what sports journalism has come to. <laughs> Exactly what sports journalism. Yes, they are saying I'm like this is I'm like no. When, when like, you and I, two buffoons on the internet, make more sense than people writing for Sports Illustrated. Bailey Zappi is not. He the, here's the thing. He's in a good situation with a really dominant defense, and he, he's not doing anything spectacular. He's he's not he's not doing anything special. He's executing the game plan, and that's it. It's yes. all he's doing. He's, More coach speak. He's taking, he's taking what the defense gives him. Yes, that's all he's doing. He's not doing anything special. He's not like he's not like threading the needles. He's not like dropping dimes. He's literally <laughs> executing the game plan. That's all he's doing. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh my God. No, he has a he has a really good running back. He has a really great defense. He don't have to do much. That's what Brady did when he stepped in. He didn't have to do shit. All he had to do was not fuck up. That's it. You know, things have been said about Bill Belichick over the years and how he is as a person, as a coach, and people say all the time, oh, I would never want to play for Bill, like, so strict, so this, so that. But 
what I respect about his coaching style and especially on defense is he takes guys and says, this guy does this best. I'm only going to ask him to do that thing. Yep. So whether you're really good at blitzing or you're really like you're a linebacker that's really good in coverage, he's not going to ask you to be out there on first downs. You're only going to be out there on third down and you're only going to do the thing you're good at. And that allows these players to play as fast as they can and not do a whole lot of thinking. And just, I, I really enjoy um, the way they, the way they pick their defense. Guys like Josh Uche, um, Barrymore up front from Alabama, uh, Bill, Al Bill Duggar, Barrymore, you know, all those guys. His motto is this, do your job. Yeah. That's it. Do your job. Everything else take care of itself. And that's really it. And that's what Billy Zappi is doing. Billy Zappi is doing his job. He's managing the game. He's not making mistakes. And they're lighting people up. Now, this How'd is the upset of the next- weekend for me. How do you feel about this next game? This this was the upset of the weekend for me. How did you feel about the now four and two New York Jets? New York Jets are three and zero in division. They're real. They're real. They they are a problem. Zach Wilson is a buddy. Big, they, dude, listen to me. my preseason predictions with New York. I did. New York, Hell Giants no. and Jets being in the bottom five is not looking good. <laughs> the Jets are – they're putting it together. Their defense – their defense already put it together. Their defense got it. Sauce Gardner is – he is – he's everything he's been advertised as. Yeah. Quentin Williams was in Aaron Rodgers' ass. Quentin, Will- Quentin Williams is – that's another Alabama product. He 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 stepped – he's definitely – he made Aaron Rodgers uncomfortable. And he said, you know, I'm going to block a kick just to top it off. <laughs> this this game was probably the biggest upset. Evan Rodgers was extremely flustered. Brees Hall is coming into his own. Yes. Brees Hall is most definitely coming into his own. He's – that he was – he – I'm going to have to say, I thought it was George Pickens, but he – Brees Hall is going to be that steal. He, at, the, at the end of the year, everyone's going to look back, and he's going to be the steal in the draft. I need to take this moment before I forget to admit where I was wrong in fantasy. (laughs) So (laughs) some guys that I thought were not going to be a thing that definitely are a thing. uh, Brees Hall is one for sure. What? I I was like, no way this guy, he's going to be an early down bruiser on a team that's never going to be ahead. So why bother? Uh, Brees Hall definitely proven me wrong. Uh, Tyreek Hill proven me wrong. Every game he's got, you know, he's putting up numbers, big plays, even without Mahomes. So I'll say that now. The ones – oh, also I was wrong about Russell Wilson. Definitely thought he was going to be tearing I, it up, MVP I status. Was, I, I, was, yeah. I was definitely wrong about Russell Wilson as well. That I was going to save it to the end for that, but, yeah. We, but we, I we, was we'll get to that. I was right about Albert O. Uh Currently not even active on the Broncos roster. <laughs> he is on none of my fantasy teams. Oh my God. Dude. But the Green Bay, Green Bay, again, I've been saying this shit. I've been saying this since they they who did who did they lose to? I've been saying this since they lost to the Vikings. Y'all need to stop panicking. It is time to start panicking. <laughs> like right now. Special te- what's going on with special teams? I don't this is not a new issue for them. Man, there's <laughs> man, they're, their special teams is, I don't know. The Green Bay Packers right now are in a complete. Hold on, hold on. What the hell just happened? Huh? What oh, the hell just happened? She was sneezing. She was sneezing. Okay. At this point. She got like a new dog or something. <laughs> the comp- Green Bay Packers are in complete disarray. From offense to defense to special teams, they got to figure it out. But it looks like the Vikings are going to win that division hands down. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even notice their record was as good as it is. Oh, yeah, it did, yeah. Making our way down there. This was actually a pretty good game between the Colts yeah. and Jags. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it came down. It came down. Matt Ryan finally showed why he was – why he, why the Colts wanted him and why they traded for him. Uh, he threw a late touchdown pass to uh, Alec Pierce. Yep. It, it was a nice – it was a nice – 
I mean, he took he took a shot to the chin, but hey, he stood in there. He threw it up. I thought it was going out of bounds. And I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> when he, when he let it go, I was like, yeah, that's going out of bounds. Like they didn't have a shot, and somehow that shit found Alec Pierce running down the sideline. I was like, all right, all right that's ball game. What a lanky guy, too, that Alec Pierce is. Yeah, and he he's gonna be special. He just there's some things that he got to tweak and fix, but he he's gonna be a he's gonna be a uh, what was that kid's name who played for the Colts at one point? He was a he kept he kept getting concussions. He was a white guy. I can't think of his name. Uh huh. Another he white guy. With, he played with Andrew Luck. I think you're thinking of either Anthony Gonzalez or Austin Collie. Yes, Austin Collie. Yeah. So Both I think. I think he's going to be what they should have been. Great whites. <laughs> sure. But I think I think that's what he – I think he's going to be what they should have been. And uh, he's going to have – him and Michael Pittman are going to be a problem. About 58 passes attempted for Matt Ryan. Holy shit. That's a lot. That's way – And but that comes that comes from not being able to run the ball. No True, job yeah, no – Philip Lindsay was shit. So that Deion Jackson looked pretty good, but yeah. yeah. Deion Jackson, he stepped up, but they to, they need to consist like Matt Ryan shouldn't be throwing 58, throwing 58 attempts is that's way too much. That's, that's, that's how old he is, for God's sakes. <laughs> that, that's too many, it's just too much. Now the aforementioned Minnesota Vikings moved to five and one, baby. You wouldn't know it from watching them because <laughs> the first halves of their games is like, are they ever gonna score? But just um, don't give Kirk Cousins any more primetime games. And this was weird because uh, third, <clears throat> the third string quarterback, Skylar Thompson, was supposed to be um, playing this game for Miami. He actually did start and ended up getting injured himself. He didn't so, get it. He hurt his fingernail. Okay. He hurt his fingernail. Is this a conspiracy? He hurt his fingernail. He's a bitch. Like they literally showed him, like there was blood coming. I'm like, bro, are you serious? Your fingernail, man. If you don't wrap that shit up and get back out here, <laughs> then you so you then you throw then you throw Teddy Bridgewater, who still got cobwebs in his goddamn head. I mean, I'm he's like, got to still be all kind of blurry. I'm like, what are you? I'm like, what is going on in Miami right now? I mean, but Tyreek's still doing Tyreek things. Yeah, I mean, Teddy still managed to throw for 329, two touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, he's I mean he's losing effort. I mean, he's still, yeah, it was definitely a losing effort. Um, but, you know, he's still doing his thing. Like, I see it like this. They were great together, Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, and they're going to be great without each other. It's just I mean, simple. these are uh, – the Vikings, I had a – you know, I think everyone kind of thought they would be fine. But um, the Dolphins, they're, they're a scrappier team than I gave them credit for. They might yeah, have something to show by the end here. I don't, I don't, I don't see. I think, I think a lot of the thing. I think they, t- I think they lost a lot of momentum, and hopefully getting Tua back this week should help them bounce back. But um, I don't know. This was a sloppy game. Who day versus who that? This is Classic this game, game was this game was weird, sloppy. It was just not a lot of like. It didn't really get interesting to the end. I mean, as you can see, the score. It, it 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 didn't get interested until the end. Um, Jamar Chase finally showed his fucking face. Finally, how about that? Big game. Um, seven for one thirty-two and two. So Jamar Chase finally showed up. Um, Camaro's fine. I think Camaro's finding his stride. The Saints That's are about, in- uh, nineteen carries is a lot for him off that rib injury. Yeah, the Saints are in. Quarterback abyss right now because I say Andy, that. Dalton, Andy Dalton is not going to lead you to the playoffs. James Winston isn't leading you anywhere. You would take either one of those guys right now over Justin Fields. Yes. <laughs> yes, I absolutely would. I would take either one of those guys over Justin Fields at this point. But yeah, um, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, they, they even if Jameis is super – well. I don't know. If Andy was winning more, it'd be more controversial. But I do think when James is healthy, they'll throw him back in. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's as long as he's win- long as they're winning, 
if they start if they start losing real bad, then you know it's it's going to be because they're they're two and four now. So yeah, the, the Giants, the New York Football Giants, are a real goodness. football team. Okay, Daniel Jones is being a real quarterback. Saquon Barkley is healthy, and that defense is a problem. And I mean, this would all be impressive enough on its own, but Daniel Jones is throwing to Darius Slayton and Richie Nobody. James Nobody. and a, a just now healthy Wandell Robinson. I mean, Daniel yeah. Bellinger led all <laughs> categories. So that, if that says anything to all you big fans who know who Daniel Bellinger is. I mean, if you look at if you look at the stats right here, the pass, rush, and receiving, all balls, all Ravens, yep. every last one of them. Speaking the of, I mean, Kenny and Drake looked great. Yeah, yeah, looked great. Fuck him because I had fucking J.K. Dobbins. I don't even know what happened. Did he get hurt? Uh, I'm not I don't sure. Because he just they he just they just stopped putting him in a game, and I'm like, yeah. what is happening? I'm like the one week I decide to ri- rely on J.K. Dobbins, he's not playing. I was like, "Thank you for screwing me." Yeah, the, uh, the Ravens moved to three and three, and the Giants advanced to five and one. The Giants are real, dude. The Giants are gonna be the Giants. What the hell? It's oh yeah, another thing that reminds me of that I thought was going to be a thing that's totally not a thing. Kadarius Tony, for God's sakes. Is he playing? Is he is he playing finally? Even when he was healthy, they didn't play him. That's that just not going to work out. Yeah, I think I think I think he's going to get traded. I think he's getting traded, and I think uh, what's what's the uh, Kenny Galladay? Kenny Galladay. I think they're both out. I, mean, uh, I, I I would say I would put it that they're probably both going to be gone before the trade deadline. Two big investments that turn sour very quickly. Hey, it is what it is. It's the nature of the business. Mitch this- Trubisky has oh, to come yeah. back in the game and save the Steelers against the Tom Brady-led Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are frauds. They're not a playoff team. They will not be a playoff team. Tom Brady should have retired once he saw his center went down. He should have let the fucking team go. And he would still have his family. But guess what? Now you have no chance at the playoffs, no family, now what? This was an odd game. Uh, Plenty of injuries in the secondary for Pittsburgh. The kind of game you would have thought Brady would be all over with all weapons available. And yet here we are looking at 20 to 18 Steelers win. No TJ Watt, no Kenny Pickett. Brady threw for 40. Brady had 40 attempts. For 243 yards. That's you no. No. Yikes. That's that's awful. You do 40, you do 40 times for 243. That's it? Yeah, nah. You're done. You're old. It's time for you to call it a day. That's what it is. Here's a familiar sight. A Panthers loss and Christian McCaffrey leading all categories. I mean, my God, if they let him throw the ball. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the one in five Panthers. Not they're looking trash. good. They're, they're not looking good. And and on top of that, they traded Robbie. And they traded, you traded your second. I'm going to say your best receiver because I feel like he's Ooh. better than DJ Moore. Hot take. I, I, I'm going to have to say he's a, he's, he's a tad bit better than DJ Moore. Um, And then you traded him. So now you just got DJ Moore. LaVisca Sano is dealing with the hamstring. Mm, so now you got so now Christian McCaffrey, not only does he have to run the ball, he has to catch the ball too. <laughs> he's used to it. He's not the play. He got, that's this is this is horrible. This was Carolina also is, odd because Cam Akers is seemingly like completely out of favor with the coaching staff here. Cam Cam Akers. Going to to Carolina is not going to work out for anybody. I don't know. It's, I don't know if that's the. I just mean um, as far as the Rams go, uh, he wasn't active for them this last game. Like they started Henderson, uh, Acres was out and he wasn't even injured. 
It's like a personal thing. Is it a personal? I'm just trying to figure this out right quick, though. Is what happened between the Super Bowl and the beginning of the year? Yeah. Because he was supposed to be, because he took the league by storm last year, and he was supposed to repeat that this year, but you didn't even start him in week one. He played very few snaps in week one. So I don't, I don't understand. I didn't understand the decision. So maybe there's some internal shit going on there. Uh, they need to. Rams need to figure it out, man. They're going to fall behind quick, especially with these uh, these two birds in the division here. Seahawks and Cardinals played each other in a divisional matchup. Kenneth Walker, looking good. Yes. It I is wrong. time. It's time for everyone in Arizona to, to, to really admit Collar is not your guy. Cliff Kingsbury is not your guy. Mm. It is time for them to go. Because the shit, the shit that they're putting up, and they can say, well, we, we get DeAndre Hopkins back. That don't mean shit. You didn't, you, you, you didn't, you didn't, no, DeAndre Hopkins is not going to make a change. Robbie Anderson is not going to make a change. Your play calls have been shit. Kyler Murray is, he's not that guy. Yeah, the, the Robbie Anderson addition, especially when you have Hopkins about to come back, Marquise Brown's been pretty good. Well, he's, just, well, he's good. down, no, he's done for the year. Well, he's potentially, well, they're saying six weeks, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, he that's that was that's why it made sense because yeah. Marquise Brown got hurt again um in his game. So I'm just like it's still it's just like Cliff Kingsbury can't coach. Like it's it's looking bad right now. So it's either it's either coaching or it's Kyler. Like so that's that's just what it is. Like it's hey, yeah, cut it a, out. Uh, <laughs> this wasn't a uh big game for like Gino at all. Like so mm-hmm. rushing and uh defense pretty much it. Kyler Kyler led in passing and rushing. That's a problem. Yeah. That that's, that's a problem. Especially when you're not winning. Exactly. That is a problem. This How about game. the rematch everyone waited for? This game was awesome. This is game an was awesome, awesome man. outstanding game. Um Patrick Mahomes he gotta fix those mistakes. Um, but all in all, this is a great game. I don't see Stefan Diggs. He he doesn't he's he's a deceptively fast individual. Yes. Like he's deceptively fast. Like I look I look at him like this like how is he getting behind your defense? Like he's not one of those guys you gotta concern yourself with, but somehow every week he manages to beat your defense. Now, refresh my memory. This came down to a fourth down, yes? Yes. I want to say yes. I think it was a fourth down. They got knocked down, something like that. Yes, I think so. Yeah, and this came all the way down. They got the ball game. back and walked it down the field. Okay. But I'm just like, it's a, it was a great game. But Patrick, if Patrick Mahomes had to fix the, the options, definitely cost him. It definitely hurt, um, but Josh Allen's the best quarterback in the league right now. Stephon yeah, Diggs, the best know. wide out. Stephon Diggs, the best wide out in the league right now. There's no comparison. There's, I don't care who you say, AJ Brown. You can say whoever you want. There's no one doing what Stephon Diggs is doing consistently since week one. Yeah, nothing nothing seems to phase Josh Allen. I mean, he, he reads the coverage as well. And even if you manage to disturb him and get him off his spot in the pocket, he, he gets out of it and kills you on the ground. So yep. it's just and, nuts. And I, I honestly his his first two years were bad. Somehow yeah. he turned them shits around and it's just been he's been off and around. He's he's definitely he's gonna either win the MVP this year or he's going to they're winning the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, maybe both. 
everyone's like, well, what about fuck Lamar? Lamar Jackson is a running back. Okay. Let's just be real. Lamar Jackson is showing you every week. They've how many they've blown what multiple leads this year? Yeah. They blew to the I know there there was the they lost they blew the lead to the Dolphins. They blew the lead to the Bills and to the Giants. So you, you, you and he like literally Lamar had an opportunity to to win the game and he got stripped. It's he it's not it's it's he should have said he should have did this. Sit out. Okay. I say the same thing for Roquan. Sit out. Do not play. Because you show you show what that team's missing when you're not there. Because when you're playing, you're not hurting anybody. You're not, oh, I'm showing my, I'm showing why they should pay me. No, dumbass. You're putting more fucking wear on your tires. So guess what? If you get hurt or you get dinged up or you need a surgery at the end of the season, guess what? It goes your money. Yeah. Yeah. If you get hurt, it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. There goes your money. You don't no one's gonna pay for an injured injured player. Sit out. I'm not playing this year. It's that simple. I'm not gonna play this year. You gotta figure it out. Le'Veon Le'Veon Bell did it. Le'Veon Bell held up for what six weeks going into the season? (laughs) Yeah. I'll pay for that. I'll, I'll I'll pay that fine. I'll pay it. It's cool. But at the end of the day, I'm not putting my body out there to get hurt and then I lose out on money. It's just that simple. But hey, you know what? That's just me. That's coming from a fan. But you gotta be smart. You gotta be smart about it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna stick to this. Josh Allen is gonna win the MVP this year. There's no there's no question. If he loses the MVP to Lamar Jackson, I'm gonna call horse shit. I can't Probably imagine. I would hard. say the only I would think Hurts would be second, but that's probably got to be it. Mm, yeah, but he's not doing what Josh Allen's doing. No, right? I'm just saying if there was a runner up, I would imagine it's Hurts. Yeah, it, it should definitely be it should definitely be uh Jalen Hurts, but at this point, I feel like he's the clear-cut favorite as the best quarterback in the league this year. This shit here was hilarious. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. going to be honest with you. This shit was hilarious. I I no longer hear the, oh, Cooper Rush is better than Dak. All right. Yeah, three interceptions later, that story, that narrative changed fast. Yeah, they quiet down real quick, don't they? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> they now, quiet down I, really I, do, I do wish this game was in Dallas. I, I, I prefer them to play in Philly at the end of the year. What? Man, I will take this win going into the bye week. I'll take it. <laughs> Dude, this shit, this game was hilarious. It started out funny as shit. It was what, twenty to it was twenty to nothing, and then they kicked the field goal. The second half, y'all kind of let off off the gas a little bit, yeah. Yeah. a little bit. I think they were just like, no, let's 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 make this game a little bit more interesting. And then it's like, okay, now we're gonna put them to sleep. I mean, this was a, a James Bradbury to like kind of coming out party. I mean, everyone knows how solid he is, but Dude. really showing up in prime time on the screen, you know, in, in an Eagles uniform. And James then Bradbury, Johnson. Your, Johnson. Your, DB, your DBs were all over it. Like, they were all over the field. I'm like, damn. Like, I got yeah. worried. Yeah, I saw Kavon Wallace on the field for a little bit there. And that's never good when you see him out there. So, <laughs> luckily, uh, Chauncey. Gardner Johnson was able to come back in the game because he was having a heck of a game. Yeah, I mean, they, all all of them were like, I'm just like the the interceptions were hilarious. I was like, yep, there's one. Oh, nope, there's another one. Oh shit, there's a third one. Yep, hits it. They Dak's coming back next week. <laughs> you know, and it's like I believe I think. Our backup left tackle was in for this game, so it's like it's nice to see. You know, we can have some moving parts and pieces, and it doesn't completely throw everything into disarray. Miles Sanders still looks fresh as hell. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the receiving game, Devontae Smith and A.J. still look great. So, Mark I like I love it. came in, and he did his thing for a little bit. So, and then, so, I mean, your run game looked good. The passing game, I think 
I think their goal was to come in and run the ball. Yeah. Because they could have lit – you could have lit that secondary on fire. Like, I most definitely believe you could have. But I think that once that – I think once the guard – the tackle went down, I think they, they had to change their game plan up a little bit. Like, they knew they weren't going to have that pass protection like they needed because it showed in late in the game. Well, and I'll say this, too. I mean, credit where credit's due. Micah Parsons is – all over the fucking field. I mean, it, it's crazy how much ground this guy can cover. Um, yeah. But, you know, luckily, thankfully, got a pro bowler, longtime pro bowler in Lane Johnson, who was able to stifle him for most of the night. They had a good game plan for slowing down Parsons, so he wasn't able to do the things he's normally able to do. And that's the craziest thing. What happened to Demarcus the, the Lawrence was a force at one point. Now he got paid and he ain't shit. Butt cheeks. <laughs> so, so it was good to see. It was, it was a total team effort, you know, and no one really yeah. stood out over anyone else. It was just defense and offense coming together for a, a nice team win over a division rival. So that was awesome. Absolutely, it was a great, it was a great game. Now, Monday this, night, this dog shit. What'd you think? Nathaniel Hackett needs to be fired right now, like. <laughs> Right fucking now. Nathaniel Hackett needs to be fired. Okay. He's a horrible head coach. He 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 just he looks like an idiot. Okay. He 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 has the facial expression like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Like how, bro? Like you have Melvin Gordon. Latavius Murray is outplaying Melvin Gordon. And props to wow. Latavius Murray. I mean, this guy, he shows up in the city on he fucking the, Thursday, he and he's he's Saints. got 20 carries by Sunday. He was with the Saints when they played. Who did they play? Was it Minnesota? Yeah, it was only a few weeks ago. Yeah. they they were in, He was in England playing against the Vikings. And then the following week, he's in Denver. I'm like, what the fuck? Pretty and now he's. And now he's what 15 carries for 66 yards, dude. Listen to me. Not bad. The Denver Broncos are dog shit. <laughs> okay, that's what they are. The Chargers, I'm gonna give them a pass. Justin Herbert, I'm pretty sure he's still dealing with those front that, that fractured ribs. And then he doesn't have Keenan Allen. So Mike Williams, who screwed me yesterday, he, he's getting he's getting a lot of attention from the defense. After that Chiefs game, people are defending him a little bit differently. Um, Austin Eckler is still being Austin Eckler. He's getting in the end zone. Yep. But at this they're getting, point, they're getting Gerald Everett involved quite a bit more too. Sure. He's been he's in he's been heavily involved in this offense. But I, I gotta say this, and and I, and I want everyone to hear me. They the Broncos are dead. Okay. Um they're going to get butt fucked when they play the Chiefs. And it's not even gonna be pleasant. They're going to get butt fucked when they play the Chiefs. It's just that simple. Very possible. I hope. They don't have to play. I hope they don't have to play the Bills because if they do, that shit is going to be a massacre. It's not this is a, everything. I mean, the gears just look clunky. It's and not so. Russell Wilson looks. He looks like a shell of his old. Like he's just like a shell of himself. He yeah. he's not doing what he's supposed to do. Court, you have weapons. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. You got was Kim Hamlin. You have talent around you. What yeah. the fuck is going on? So I'm going to blame Nathaniel Hackett because he can't coach. That's 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 just that's my final answer. It's Nathaniel Hackett's fault because this team looks they look god awful. I don't know if the the hand injury still bugs him or if it's the confidence from never really looking good, you know, in his recovery. But, yeah, something's still off with Russ. Um, the chemistry doesn't seem there quite yet with him and Cortland Sutton, and they were supposed to be – I mean, that was supposed to be a, quite a pair between those two. It just hasn't really panned out yet. 
I'm I if I'm Denver, I'm watching this shit. And if we have one more game like that, I'm firing Nathaniel Hackett on the spot. So it's I'm gonna like, do I'm gonna do them like Arizona <laughs> State did uh Herm Edwards. You're not gonna make it off the field, my boy. I'm that firing was, you on that the was so field. sad to see Herm go down like that. I am firing you on the you're not gonna make you better not if we away, don't you get your ass on that flight. You better figure out another way home. There's no way I'm allowing this man to continue to ruin my franchise. He is destroying this franchise. Well, you got anything else before we get out of here, my friend? For all those, the NBA season has started. The Golden State Warriors have received their, their rings for the fourth time. That's fun. I'm going to go check out some NBA, see what's going on, get in the mood, you know? Well, I think the Warriors, the Warriors should be playing, to, I think we're playing tonight, so check that game out. I don't know if you know this, but in some places, if you're turning in a pumpkin for a pumpkin competition, you can't carve out the inside. Why are they make it rot faster? Uh, makes sense. So now the pumpkin that I've been working on for my daughter <laughs> disqualified. Disqualified. Uh, say lovey. Say lovey. It is what it is. Well, sir, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. This is always Thank you for joining us every Tuesday night at 9:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8:30 Central. Tell a friend about us. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. I mean, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Nate and I, we're trying to get rich. We're trying to get famous. <laughs> we can't do that without your help. Absolutely, that is the goal. Thank you for being loyal listeners, and we will see you next time. Peace.